Thank you. This is the work of um, the dissertation work of my former student, Gurjat Singh, my longtime NASA collaborator, Steve Ellis. So the purpose of this uh, study was to uh, study AR depth at reaching distances using a perceptual matching task. Many compelling AR applications use this kind of task, operate in reaching distances, and here's just a picture of a few of those applications. This work is um, building upon prior results that were presented at ISMAR 2015, which was also in Japan. And in that work, we also used perceptual matching. We used a real pointing object matched in depth to a virtual target object at reaching distances. And this graph summarizes the results from this previous work collected across three experiments. So here along the x-axis we have the actual depth of the target object. Along the y-axis we have the error in depth of the location of the pointing object. So an error of zero means that the um, pointing object was placed at the intended depth, error is greater than zero, it was placed farther than intended, error is under zero, less than intended. There were two conditions in this prior work, the real consistent condition here, the target object was a real object, so that's the control condition. As you can see, there's very little error. And an AR collimated condition, here the target was shown in an invis invisor display. That was a typical display in use at the time. And depth matches were overestimated from half a centimeter to about four centimeters. The likely reason that we hypothesized at the time was that the display had non-adjustable collimating optics and so was focused at optical infinity, even though disparity cues suggested the closer distance. So the hypothesized reason for this error was the accommodative Virgin's mismatch. A diagram like this has been shown in many talks at this uh, conference. So in normal viewing, the Virgin's distance and focal distance are consistent for everything we look at. In a virtual environment, this can be disassociated in two different directions. In one direction, the focal distance is closer than the disparity distance. Here, other work in um, perceptual psychology suggests that this will bias the vergence angle of the eyes inwards a bit and result in an object that is seen as closer than intended. And in the opposite direction, where the focal distance is larger than the vergence distance, the bias will go in the other direction and objects will be seen as farther away. So because the prior experiment used collimating optics, this third condition is what we believed was operating. So this uh, hypothesis can explain three properties of the prior results. This is the model we had of the error. So first, the depth matches of the virtual targets are overestimated relative to real targets. You can see that. The amount of overestimation increases with increasing distance, and the results are very linear in nature. So all of those properties are fit with this model. So testing this hypothesis from this prior work was the primary motivation for the current work that I am presenting today. We could not test this hypothesis, however, on the Envis display because the focal distance was fixed and unadjustable. At the time we did this work, in fact, there was no commercially available off-the-shelf display that allowed the focal distance to be modified. And that is still true today. Therefore, and I guess this is the reason why this paper is in this session, we built our own display we call it the augmented reality haploscope. It has a simple optical system that allows us to insert a lens that changes the focal distance. And stereo disparity is presented by physically rotating portions of the display. 
Because of this, the focal distance and the disparity distance can be adjusted independently of each other and to a high degree of accuracy. I will mention that engineering and calibrating this display was very challenging and took a number of years of effort. So that leads to the first experiment that we conducted. There were four conditions in this experiment and three purposes for the experiment. The first purpose is contained in the top two conditions. So we replicated the real consistent condition and the AR collimated conditions of the prior experiment. Given that the haploscope is a very different display design from the original NVIS, if we get the same results, then that suggests that these results would apply to a variety of different AR display designs and confidence increases that these are a fundamental way that humans would uh, match depth on any stereo display. So that was one purpose. Another purpose came from the AR consistent condition. Here we wanted to formally test whether presenting the targets at a focal distance that was consistent with the disparity distance would result in more accurate depth matching than the AR collimated condition. And finally, the AR midpoint condition is to test whether presenting AR targets at the midpoint of the focal range would result in matches with similar accuracy to the AR consistent condition. If that was true, then it would not be necessary to have the engineering complexity of matching the focal distance consistently with every presented distance. So here are the results from the first experiment. Again, the x-axis is showing actual distance. Y-axis is showing matching error. And here are the results from the previous work. So the real consistent results were, again, very accurate. And with increasing distance, the AR collimated results show linearly increasing overestimation. The AR consistent results were indeed more accurate, but were slightly underestimated, significantly so and the AR midpoint results were accurate. So the first purpose was to replicate the um, conditions of the original experiment, and that indeed happened. These displays are extremely different in nature, and so that does suggest that this pattern of results would generalize to any stereo display with collimated optics. The second purpose was to test the AR consistent and they were indeed better than the AR collimated. And the third, we see that the AR midpoint is as good as the AR consistent, so the engineering complexity of matching the focal depth then this suggests that that is not necessary for accurate depth matching. So it is well known that increasing age leads to an ability, a reduced ability to change focus. This happens because the lens in the eye becomes stiff it's the reason why middle-aged people begin to need reading glasses. Despite this, the um, skill for many perceptual tasks, including many related to distance perception, is quite well preserved with increasing age. That's an effect also from perceptual psychology. So all of the, ex the observers in experiment one were young, average of about 21 years in age, and therefore we can assume suffered no age-related reductions in focusability, although we did not measure this specifically for these observers. So it was unclear how older observers would uh, replicate these effects, if they would or not. So the second experiment simply replicated the first experiment, but with older observers. So mean age of uh, 56 years, and here are these results. So here are the experiment two results from the older observers are in black, and the experiment one results are in gray for comparison. The older observers were still extremely accurate in matching real targets, and they were similarly accurate for AR consistent and AR midpoint targets. They differed only for the AR collimated condition. So with increasing distance, the older observers had the same slope as the younger observers, but a shift in bias to match more closely. This means, on average, in fact, that the older observers were more accurate than the younger observers. This is consistent with other work from perceptual psychology, 
which shows that um, older people are less biased by incorrect accommodative stimuli because the visual system learns to ignore that stimulus for older observers. However, there is a conflicting finding. The AR consistent conditions for both younger and older observers is underestimated. The effect is about two to three millimeters in size, but it's statistically significant. It was replicated over 20 people. While pondering why this might be, we realized that brighter objects appear closer than dimmer objects. That's well known. When other depth cues are equalized, and here's a picture of the real target and a picture of the brighter target that was used in experiments one and two. Of course, a photograph cannot capture the experience of looking through the display, but when you look through the display, the virtual object was notably brighter than the real object. And experiment three replicated experiment one just using a dimmer target. We recruited younger observers for experiment three to uh, compare them to experiment one. Here's the results from experiment three. Again, experiment three is in black and experiment one is in gray. Experiment three did not replicate the real consistent condition. That wouldn't have been any different anyway. So the dimmer targets did not differ for AR collimated. They were more accurate for AR consistent and equally accurate for AR midpoint. So the dimmer targets did indeed increase the accuracy of the matching, but only in the consistent condition. So the prior study hypothesized that collimated near field AR targets bias the vergence angle outwards by a constant amount. And um, all three of the experiments replicated this effect. So this here, the x-axis is again target distance, and the y-axis shows the change in vergence angle for only the collimated um, targets. And so all three experiments suggest a constant change in vergence angle for each distance. So that is strong evidence for this hypothesis. This hypothesis would be an explanation as to why certain kind of depth errors appear for a matching task. However, this experiment did not measure this change in vergence angle and by integrating an eye tracker now, it would be easy to directly measure it. So that's something that we would like to do in a future replication of this work. So finally, practical implications for this work for accurate depth matching at reaching distances should not use collimated graphics. A focal distance set to the middle of the depth range is as good as a focal distance optimized for every object. And the brightness of the objects needs to match the brightness of real objects. And observers who are old enough to suffer age-related reduction in accommodative ability are just as accurate as younger observers. I'll finally mention that this work was motivated by medical applications. Most uh, Doctors and surgeons are, in fact, old enough to need reading glasses. Thank you. Any questions? We have uh, one question. Is there time for one question? Let me ask one. Uh, so I see so the, the AR midpoint uh, condition seems slightly better than AR consistent. From my point of view. Well, Why? it was not statistically better hmm. with the dimmer targets. Okay. So all of my statements about that were based on multiple regression hypothesis tests. Hmm. But they're not shown on the graphs directly. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right.